Hello everyone, my name is Jaron Bracken. I am Senior Network Engineer with NCSI and today I'm going to show you how to upgrade or install for the first time CSA version 4.5. The environment I'm working in today is my lab. I want to show you that I have a Cloud Services Appliance installed. There it is, certificate posted. For the purposes of this demonstration, I have turned it off. If you have a CSA that you're trying to upgrade from 4.4 or 4.3 to 4.5, um, you can leave yours on and use a temporary IP address on the new one while you copy over um, all your settings. Um, I don't have very many settings on mine. Nothing, nothing crazy, nothing out of uh, the ordinary, so I just turned mine off and I'm going to spin up the new one. The first thing we need to do is download the installation files. And here I have the link. These will be in the description down below. Um, but here is where we can download the ISO to do that. So you click this link to download the ISO. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. Also on this page are instructions specific to your virtual environment. So you can see all of them here. Uh, again, this link will be in the, in the description and you can choose whichever environment you happen to be running. I am running vSphere and I believe that is the most popular so I'm going to start there. Alright, here are the instructions for vSphere. This is a little bit different if you are used to the old, uh, the old way of deploying it via the OVA file. Um, we are installing after building the VM this time. Um, and so what they have here are specifications for the virtual machine that we need to run in order to be compliant. So, um, two CPUs, eight gigs of RAM. The boot, uh, boot has to be set to BIOS, not EFI. We need a logical, uh, ALSI logical parallel drive of 50 gigs. And one to two one gigabit network cards at E1000. So, um, my, my example, I'm in a DMZ and uh, it's a, a single uh, interface, so I'm only going to do one. So let's go and build that VM. Alright, here is my ASX server. I'm going to create a new virtual machine. Um, I'm creating, I'm not going to register or deploy this time. Alright, CSA 4.5. Um, you have options for compatibility. If you choose ESX 5.1 and then Linux and then CentOS 7, it will set some of those uh, requirements for you, like the SCSI adapter. So next, here's my storage. And here's where I need to modify my hardware in order to meet those recommendations. So I'm going to change this to two CPUs. Going to change this to 8 gigs of RAM. And there's my hard drive at 50 gigs. And you can see in the list it already is uh, chosen the proper one, LSI Logic Parallel. Alright, network adapter. I do need to change this from VMXNet3 to E1000 for compatibility purposes. And uh, I'm just going to keep my, my network there. Most, most people though, if you have a DMZ set up, you'll want to choose the DMZ out of that uh, out of that drop down. Okay, I'm going to hit next and finish. There is my virtual machine. And the first thing I'm going to do, and I could have done this on the last screen, but I wanted to show it uh, in this interface instead, is I'm going to mount the ISO. I had previously uploaded my ISO to the data store and so we're, we're good to go there. You obviously will have to do that on your own or you can run this through um, the remote control console and mount it from your local machine there. So uh, here's my drive, data store ISO file, and there's my ISOs. There it is, 4.5. I'm going to select that. I'm also going to tell it to connect and to make sure it's connected to power on because we are going to be booting off of this. The other thing that uh, I wanted to point out is you can see I am set to BIOS here and choosing that ESX 5.1 uh, automatically moved this to BIOS for me. Okay, I'm going to save this. And I'm now ready to power this VM on. Alright, we are at the upgrade window. All I have to do is click my mouse in there and hit enter and away it goes. 
This should take anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes, uh, obviously depending on performance and load on your server and whatnot. Um, it should proceed without any issues. And when it's done, it'll tell you that it's ready to be rebooted. If you have any problems, open up a ticket. Support is very good at helping get those resolved. All right, I'm going to pause the recording while this installs, and we will come back when it's done. All right, you can see by looking at the message down there, press enter to quit, the installation is complete. So we are ready to uh, reboot the machine. So you're just going to mouse in there and hit enter, and that should start the shutdown sequence. Now this is a bootloader, which means we're not really on the hard drive yet, and uh, it usually gets stuck. So uh, don't worry about having to reset or just power it off. Uh, no big deal, no corruption will take place. However, before we, uh, we do that, I do want to go in and unmount that drive, uh, that ISO file, because we're done with it. So click on host device there, and now that should remove the drive. Now we'll watch it boot up. So there's another uh, big difference between this setup and the setup of previous CSAs. Uh, this one, you can see we've been presented almost immediately with a login screen. And if we log in using admin and admin as the password, we'll be greeted with this getting started page. Um, at this point, the CSA is actually doing background processes to remove things like this user interface and to uh, harden the appliance and so we're going to have to wait for it to reboot one more time, which it'll do automatically uh, before we begin our configuration. All right, it has rebooted on its own, so I'm going to log in again. Admin and admin, all lowercase. All right, the first thing we need to do is accept this end user license agreement and then create a new password. If it ever seems like it's not doing anything, look for this waiting for local host or uh, this little icon here to be spinning around you know that it's actually working. All right, it's done. We're back here at the screen. This is the EULA once again. We don't need to worry about that. We've already accepted it. On the left are our navigation panes. We're going to go down to System. Make sure you set the time and time zone to be appropriate for your installation. And then we're going to come to Network Settings and input our settings here. All right, make sure you hit the Add button, and there's my line with my IP address. There is my DNS server. Search suffix is not entirely necessary. Feel free to put, that, put your domain in there if you'd like. Now, it's important in this, uh, this window here, um, keep domain and hostname separate. I know the example had a full, uh, fully qualified name in here, but we, you want to keep them separate because it is going to add the two together, um, and that's where it's going to get its certificates from. So I'm going to hit Save here. It's letting me know uh, we need to reboot after this is done. So I'm going to get it, uh, hit OK, and we'll get this Please Wait screen. Once this is complete, we're going to roll over to the Appliance tab and tell it to reboot. Alright, it's done applying, so I'm going to come over to the Appliance tab and Reboot. Alright, it's done rebooting. I'm here at the login screen, but I'm not going to bother with this. If I did everything right, I should be able to log in using a web interface. Make sure you do HTTPS. You, of course, are going to get a security warning because it's using a self-signed certificate that it just generated. All right, here we are. I'm going to hit my console. Keep in mind, when you do this, if you don't have DNS set up, it's going to fail because it redirects to the host name, but I'm just going to put my 
IP address back in there and then log in as before. All right, there we are. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is to activate it. Uh, I'm not going to do it for the purposes of the demonstration here. It's pretty simple. You type in, these are the same credentials that you activate your core with. You can either do an online activation or activate via email if you need to, where you exchange keys for the activation. All right, we'll come back to these uh, certificates in just a minute. Uh, the big thing we're looking for is I also want to come and uh, make sure we do some updates. Just to scan for updates, this is a nice connectivity check to make sure we can get out to the internet. Also, bonus, it updates your CSA. All right, there you go. You, you can see I've got a scan complete, which means uh, it was able to successfully uh, get out to the internet and check for updates. Uh, the rest of these settings are pretty much optional. Um, security, you always want to make sure this is disabled. This is the uh, built-in firewall. And um, usually these are going to be hidden behind hardware firewalls. And so we want to make sure that this one um, stays disabled. And there you go, status disabled. You can set up some extra users if you'd like. Uh, the defaults here are admin and service. The service account is the one that we actually connect to the core with, and it takes on the password of the admin account. So if this ever changes, make sure you change this one as well, or at least change it on the core server. I highly recommend setting up email alerts. That way you can know if there's any problems with this, including whether or not it needs to be reactivated. Uh, and then there's some reports for things like troubleshooting and, and whatnot. Um, the rest of the settings, if you're, if you're upgrading, I recommend you go and do a side-by-side -side comparison and just pull over the same settings. Make sure everything looks uh, roughly the same and matches. When you have it configured and you like the way it is configured, we're going to come over here and tell it to do a backup on a monthly basis. That way we have a backup um, in case something does happen to it. You could, in theory, do a backup and restore from your uh, 4.4 or 4.3 CSA. Um, I usually don't. I've had some problems with those. And there's just so few settings in here, to me, it's not worth it. OK, um, <clears throat> we're going to pretend it's activated and we are ready to go. I'm going to go back to my core server here. And it's pretty simple. All I need to do is repost the core certificate to the CSA by clicking here, clicking Edit, looking at um, the information here, make sure it matches, and then hitting apply. It's letting me know because I do have a self-signed certificate. Uh, it is recommended to get a third party, but we don't need to for this. So I'm going to hit yes and let it accept it. And there we go. Certificate was posted. If I hit close here, it's going to want to restart the broker service, and that's just fine. If I make my way back over to the CSA and I look at Manage Core Certificates, there is my certificate. Okay, um, at a very high level, that is how you upgrade and install a CSA 4.5 uh, in your environment to get you off of the 4.3, which is a vulnerable, uh, no longer supported CSA, or to install it for the first time. Thank you for your time. Have a good day. <laughs>